Hello, welcome to this edition of the 802.11 Commentary. My name is Tom Carpenter, and today we're going to be focusing on Clause 4.3 in part, looking at the basic architecture of an 802.11 wireless LAN. Before we talk about the basic architecture of our 802.11 wireless LANs, let me introduce you to the CWNP certifications. The certifications can take you from a wireless LAN novice to a recognized industry expert. It all begins with the CWTS certification. This specialist level is a great introduction for those new to the study of wireless LANs and 802.11 based technologies. It's also good for project managers and technical sales professionals, among others. The next level is the CWNA. The Certified Wireless Network Administrator is an individual who has proven knowledge in RF behavior, planning, implementation, security, and support. This is a required certification for those desiring to achieve more focused and elite certifications later on. The next level is the professional level, and it includes the design, security, and analysis professional certifications. Here you learn the details related to planning, securing, and analyzing or troubleshooting a wireless LAN. Each of these certifications takes the knowledge of the CWNA certification to a much deeper level. After achieving the CWNA and all three professional level certifications and proving industry experience and knowledge, you can qualify for the expert level with the CWNE certification. This level ensures both advanced knowledge and experience in working with 802.11 wireless LAN technology. You can always learn more about the certifications and also prepare for them at CWNP.com, the company website, which includes blogs, forums, and resources to help you succeed in this industry. Now today, we're looking at Clause 4.3. This clause is focused on the building blocks of a wireless LAN. It's the clause that introduces you to the standard to help you understand the bird's eye view of everything involved in actually implementing an 802.11 based wireless LAN. So this includes understanding stations, basic service sets, and the distribution system. And we'll be looking at these three components and a bit more today. Now, in later videos, we'll focus on other sections of Clause 4.3. For example, we'll look at wireless network management, and we'll talk about wireless LAN radio measurements, and look at mesh basic service sets. So all of these topics will be covered in later videos. This video is going to present the basic architectural components that make up a wireless LAN. So let's look at these architectural components, and we begin with what is called the basic service set and the station. The station, or stay, is any 802.11 wireless addressable unit. Now, a station is really a logical concept and not necessarily a physical computer. That is to say that a laptop computer or a desktop computer can have multiple radios in that device and each one of them could be a station on the wireless LAN. So it's any wireless addressable unit. Then we have the basic service set, or the BSS. This is the basic building block of an 802.11 wireless network. If you're using 802.11 to communicate, you have a basic service set. That's a fundamental concept that you want to grasp. The basic service set then acts as the core unit on which we build small, and large wireless networks. We have to understand then the station, the BSS, and the BSA. The station, of course, is the easy part. We've already talked about that. Then we'll have to talk about the BSS ID and the IBSS as well. So let's look at these components. First we have the stations, and here we have a couple of different stations. We'll call them Station 1 and Station 2. Now, Station 1 and Station 2 exist within a coverage area that is either provided by an access point or it is the area in which stations can participate in what's called an independent basic service set. So depending on whether you have a basic service set that is an infrastructure basic service set or one that is an independent basic service set, it will determine how this basic service area is created. When you implement an infrastructure basic service set, the basic service area is effectively the area where you can connect to that access point. Now we have what is called a BSS ID as well. The BSS ID is usually the MAC address of the access point. But keep in mind, 
you can have one access point that drives multiple basic service sets. So this should not be thought of as a physical address like we often think of the MAC address of an access point. So the BSS ID identifies that basic service set. Now the basic service set may also have a name, something like WLAN1 or something of that sort, but that is not the actual ID. The actual ID is the BSS ID. Now here we have another BSS. So you can have multiple basic service sets in an area. Basic service sets can overlap or they can be completely separate and distinct with their signals not effectively reaching areas that overlap. Remember then that we have the infrastructure basic service set, which does require an access point, and then we have the independent basic service set, which is sometimes called the ad hoc network. It does not require an access point. Now let's take this a little further as we understand the architectural components of a wireless LAN we have the extended service set, or the ESS. This is a set of one or more interconnected basic service sets. So here we have BSS1 and BSS2, two different BSS IDs. And notice that they have the same SSID. These matching SSIDs give us the potential to have what is called an extended service set. It is a set of one or more interconnected basic service sets. So in order for it to be an ESS, it must be interconnected. And it will need something else. There will need to be some way for the AP of BSS1 to communicate with the AP of BSS2 on the back end. In order to do this, we implement things called a distribution system and a distribution system medium. So there has to be something that connects these two access points together, usually on the wired side. Now, we can have a wireless distribution system, but they're rare unless it's a mesh BSS that we use for that purpose. In most cases, our access points connect to an Ethernet network today. And when they connect to an Ethernet network, the Ethernet, the physical cabling, is the distribution system medium. The distribution system is a collection of connections and possibly routers and all of the different things that allow Station 2 to communicate with Station 3, these two different access points in these two different basic service sets. On the back end, then, they're going to take care of collaborating with one another so that they can communicate handover when roaming takes place within the wireless network. So the service set identifier, or the SSID, is this common name. And it is the simplest thing that allows client stations to roam from one BSS to another. Because they have a shared SSID, the client stations know, okay, I can roam between these different BSSs. Now we also have the concept of something called a portal. Now the portal is not talked about as much in the literature on 802.11, but it is heavily referenced in the standard itself. The portal is actually defined in the standard as the logical point at which the integration service is provided. The what? The integration service. The standard also defines an integration function. What are these? Well, this is the function or the service that provides the function that takes care of translating from, say, 802.11 to 802.3. The frames are different, right? So we have to have some way to do some translation. This integration service takes place within this logical thing called the portal. Now we call it a logical thing because in most cases it's in the access point, but technically speaking it doesn't have to be. So the access point in most implementations is going to manage the connection to the distribution system, which is the portal, and it provides the integration services function or the integration function to state it simply. This is an extended service set and these are the core building blocks of an 802.11 architecture. So what we've seen then is we have the building blocks of the basic service set which can either be an independent basic service set or an infrastructure basic service set and then we have the extended service set.
Now, to be very practical, the way this tends to be implemented is that we use an access point to implement a BSS and then another access point to implement a BSS, and we plug those two access points into an Ethernet network. The Ethernet network gives us our distribution system medium. Then we have this capability of the interaction between the APs, distribution services, and the Ethernet network through this thing called the portal to allow communications to actually happen. Thank you for watching this edition of the 802.11 commentary where we focused on wireless LAN basic architectures.